Caspian Report has a very, very strangely titled video. Why Russia Cannot Become a Democracy. It's a very, very strange title for a number of reasons. Um, among others, uh, Russia had a different name until fairly recently. Does anybody know what it is? This is this is a tricky one. What was what's the old name of Russia? No, Prussia's Germany. Soviet Union. You know what the Soviet Union is? Was, at least in theory. It was a union of Soviets. You know what a Soviet is? It's a democracy. There were problems, but there is nothing about Russia that makes it unable to become a democracy. There is, in fact, a very strong argument that Russia can only be a democracy, a horrendously corrupt one that is run by a mob. Um, but in terms of its political form, in terms of its ideology, it's perfectly capable of being democratic. Has been for a very long time. In fact, it's, it's almost impossible to talk about a contemporary state without implicating some kind of democratic presuppositions. Now, when we're talking about democracy in present day, we're not typically just talking about democracy as the um, as the the underlying structure of the community we're typically talking about how much decision making power does the average citizen have in periodic plebiscites where you get to elect representative leaders and that's not democracy by the way but that's typically what we're talking about okay soviet union <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry like it, it, it's just it's it's absurd on its face uh, so I'm, I'm a little bit perplexed just by the title. I actually haven't seen this at all, so maybe there's something to this. But this is the, um... Oh no. Oh no. I'm a little concerned here. So, I'll, I'll tell you why I'm a little concerned. This is the, uh, description. Oh, why can't I make that bigger? That's frustrating. Hang on, let me see. If I... Uh, scale filtering. Well, that should be fine. Okay, whatever. Anyways, you can you can probably see that. Um, the story of how the hashtag Russian government evolved also explains why it cannot become a hashtag democratic state in its current territorial configuration. This last phrase here, its current territorial configuration, worries me tremendously about where this is going to go. I'm not seeing sources in the description. I don't know what that means. It's been a hot minute since I've watched Caspian Report. But um, that doesn't bode well. Doesn't bode well for a couple of reasons. Um, Haas from Infrared might be familiar with. But let's see. Let's give it a chance. Maybe they'll win us over. I've been surprised before. Russia is defined by its geography. Oh dear, Size God, is loud. its most distinctive trait. A trait that is both an advantage and a liability. Much of its territory is indefensible. There are no mountains, oceans, or deserts separating the Russian demographic core from its rivals. Sure, Russia has buffer spaces in all directions, but keeping a tab on a nation spanning 11 time zones and nearly 200 ethnic minorities requires more than just buffer space. 
Holding the Russian geography together from Kaliningrad to Vladivostok necessitates either wealth or force. But since the Russian economy has always been inadequate, force is the prevailing choice. Okay, holding a state together involves either wealth or force. Profound. By its very nature, the size of the Russian standing army and intelligence apparatus has to match the size of its territory. And this story of how the Russian government machinery evolved also explains why it cannot become a democratic state in its current territorial configuration. Despotism, it seems, is embedded into the Russian geography. Oh no. And it is the oh no. Oh, you can't be serious. They're going this... I knew it. Oh, for fuck's sake. I knew, I knew they were going to do that. Just this, this, this territorial, just right here, that line, it's territorial configuration, that gives the game away. Oh, this is going to be so bad. Unforgiving power of geography that determines the character and virtues of a people, or lack thereof. Oh my god, really? Just listen, listen to this phrasing. And it is the unforgiving power of geography that determines the character and virtues of a people, or lack thereof. No. No, it's not. The character... Oh my god. He can't be serious. Does he have a... Uh... He doesn't have a link to his, his um, source. Oh, this is going to be so bad. Today's video is sponsored by Shadowverse. Get off my screen. Incredibly much oh free God. bonus power. I mean, it, to its credit, they're pretty good graphics. I thought it was back to the footage. Life was tough in the 14th century, especially in the proximity of Muscovy. There were only two items that were commercially viable for trade, slaves and fur. But the Mongol conquest of Kivan Rus cut Muscovy off from the Mediterranean slave market, leaving fur as the sole export commodity available. So, to dominate the fur trade, Muscovy expanded north. But these expansions were not hostile takeovers. Rather, the Muscovites lobbied their envoys into the courts of the neighboring provinces, forming coalition offices that were later diplomatically annexed. It was a soft power policy that took well over a century to take shape. Slowly but assuredly, the medieval cities of Pskov, Novgorod, Smolensk, Vyazma, Rzhev, Mazaysk, Tver, Kolomna, Rizan, Murom, Rostov, Vladimir, Yaroslavl, Nizhny Novgorod, Vologda, Kalic, Vyatka, Ustuk, and Salikamsk all fell in line. Thank you for that. Did anybody remember any of those names? No? You just saw a weird cool little map thing with a bunch of bleeding lines? Yes. Very cool lines. Thank you for that. You took up like 30 seconds of your video for that. Maps old and new alike do this soft power expansion no justice because the homogenous colors imply a homogenous domain with standardized regulations. What if Hultus must watch this like porn? But medieval kingdoms were more like conglomerates of diverse territories. And that's what Muscovy was. In 1480, after integrating the last nearby Slavic realms, Muscovy turned its focus on the fertile lands to the south, which was ruled by the Golden Horde. Fur was a valuable commodity. Okay, we're four minutes in. He's going to tell us why Russia cannot... By the way, this is a very dangerous statement with for a 1.24 million... Uh, sub channel to be making without like very serious um you know theory and evidence backing it up he's going to say why russia cannot become become a democracy in present day we're four minutes in fur was a very valuable commodity he's got less than nine minutes to do this let's see but to grow in size and strength to seal Muscovy as a powerhouse, agriculture was needed. Slavic farmers needed to settle in the fertile farmlands south of the Oka River. To accomplish that, Muscovy needed to oust the Golden Horde. After back and forth hostilities, the Golden Horde fell to infighting, 
several new kingdoms emerged in its place, including Kazan, Astrakhan, Crimea and Sibir. Moscovite envoys acted quickly and lobbied into the courts of the Tatar kingdoms. Over the next decades, the Moscovites gained influence within the Tatar courts. Moscovy slowly eroded their sovereign powers, appointed regents and magistrates and chipped away at their strategic defenses until finally deciding to abolish their self-rule and massacre the civilian populations. By conquering the Tatar kingdom of Kazan in 1552, Moscovy transformed into a full North America was completely colonized and turned into a bunch of democratic states in a fraction of this time, by the way. And they had to cross an ocean. We fledged empire. Along and it was really bad. But they did it. I mean, like, the, over a territory com comparably large. Along with all its responsibilities, Kazan was situated near the confluence of the Volga and Kama rivers. So by controlling Kazan, Moscovy was able to expand down the Volga River towards the Black Sea and the Caspian Sea and up the Kama River. This just sounds like the history of, of Europe. Almost across the board. <laughs> to the Ural Mountains. However, as Moscovy transformed into Russia, the power of the monarchy was centralized. This came at a tremendous cost to the civilian population. To keep tabs on the nobility, Tsar... You mean like in France and Germany? Ivan the Terrible set up the Aprichnik in 1565. It was the first political police in Russian history. Ivan used the notorious Oprichnik to undermine the influence of the nobility and control the newly emerging trading routes going through Kazan. Anyone or any house that posed even a remote threat was eliminated swiftly and completely. Okay guys, look. Why Russia cannot become a democracy in its current territorial configuration. We are looking at a man in chainmail. He has less than seven minutes left to make his case. Like... I, I used to endorse this channel. This is unreal. The Aprichnik was so competent in intimidating the populace that later Russian leaders kept employing it. And as Russia's economic center of gravity shifted south and east, the- What? No. Are you fucking serious? We spent half the video. The 14th century was a very tough time. Fur was a valuable commodity. He's doing like detailed maps, listing all these names of places, all these little arrows. Duh, duh, duh. And they went there, and they went there, and they went there, and they made ham. It's like, and now all of a sudden, and then Russia's power shifted and just a few hundred years go by completely unremarked upon what was the point of the first half of the video the political police by then reformed and expanded became indispensable in holding the empire together from 1551 to okay never mind we're, we're back <laughs> oh my god russia grew from 1550 okay what, what was the point to all that detail if you're just going to go, and then Russia grew from 1551 to... What was the point? What was the purpose of that? By 35,000 square kilometers per year. Okay, or, you're going to give us any detail on any of this? Or one Belgium a year. However, as Russia grew, it made new enemies on all fronts. To the west, there were the Swedes, the Poles, the Prussians, and the Germans. While to the south, there were the Turks, the Tatars, the Cossacks, and the Caucasian tribes. Russia was extremely vulnerable to a coordinated... Also, why are they the Germans? Germany wasn't united by this point. ...land invasion, especially since its territory was I mean, I mostly... Guess, I guess, were they called Germans? I can't remember. ...flat. What followed was a period of total war, where Russia fought rival powers in multiple directions. It was either conquer or be conquered. And while Russia became more secure, the bigger it got, an unexpected liability emerged. The new territories to the south and east- Wait, did it get more secure the bigger it got, or did it surround itself with enemies the bigger it got? Because the, the, the enemies are the things that make it insecure, right? ...had wildly different ethnic and religious populations who were not loyal to the Tsar and rival powers repeatedly exploited the fealty of these minorities. So, 
to incorporate the new territories into the empire, the Russian leadership tried to remake the ethnic religious makeup of the regions through mass deportations, genocides and assimilation programs. Yet, even so, Russia was unable to fully erase or pacify the indigenous populations. To mitigate the threat and enforce authority over the new territories, the Russians transformed the political police into a massive security network giving it increasingly more abilities and responsibilities. Whether it was the Prikaz in the 17th century, the Akhrana in the 19th century or the KGB in the 20th century, the intelligence network became an essential component that kept Russia cohesive. Crimes were committed in the name of empire. The only brief exception to Russia's history of oppression was in the 1990s. This is idiotic. So yeah, uh, an internal colonization project, and by internal it's really external because they were talking about expansion earlier. Um, a colonization and imperial project requires force in order to maintain itself. That has no bearing whatsoever on whether once you already have a territory consolidated, whether that can become democratic. This is actually just meaningless. This is, this is literally meaningless. This is no bearing on the question of whether Russia can function as a democracy in present day. The last Soviet leader Mikhail Gorbachev and the first Russian president Boris Yeltsin led a process of democratization. The Kremlin relinquished its monopoly on political power and individual Russians took control of their lives. But instead of liberation, a sense of loss came to define the national mindset. The chaotic transformation of the economy, going from a communist command economy to a capitalist free market, left large segments of the Russian population behind. Millions slid into poverty. The situation got so bad that in 1993, a coalition of nationalists and communists rebelled against economic reforms. A constitutional crisis emerged between the president and the parliament. To push his economic reforms, Yeltsin sought to dissolve the parliament. This is a really ugly slide. In response, the parliament declared Yeltsin's decision null and void and impeached him. At okay, we're at Yeltsin now. You've got f under four minutes. Why Russia cannot become a... De like, come on. This video either needed to be like an hour long or just much shorter. Like, Russia's run by a corrupt oligarchy. It can't be truly democratic. The end. Like, that. there you go. That That's a video. At the same time, the country's self-aware constituent provinces were increasingly pushing for greater sovereignty from the Kremlin. By then, Russia had a few dozen federal subjects, including republics, autonomies, and territories, each home to distinct ethnicities. In southern Russia, the tiny region of Chechnya proclaimed outright independence. Things were moving fast. Too fast. Yes, way too fast. You've got exactly three minutes left, my friend, and... <laughs> You're... What is this clown show? This is like an April Fool's joke. Anxiety filled the halls of the Kremlin. Years earlier, the Soviet Union had disintegrated into 15 republics. Now it seemed that democracy, with its minority rights, was pushing Russia towards another disintegration. Okay. Alright. So let me see if I get this straight. Let's see if I'm predicting this correctly. So, Russia cannot become a democracy because the unruly masses uh, will will not defer to uh, overbearing unilateral centralized control. Uh, I, what is the argument here?
no less than 21 republics, 4 autonomies, and 9 territories. Yeah, do you, know, do you know why it was called the Soviet Union? Do you know why it's called the United States for that matter? Is the United States a democracy? Yeah. That's made of a whole bunch of little... It's called the United States. That's, do you know why they have national armies at the state level? That's why you have a representational system. Because you have a bunch of little democracies that are themselves involved in a bigger democracy. That's how you do that. We're on the verge of secession, and the existence of Russia was at risk. Seemingly, Russia could turn to democracy, but not in its existing territorial configuration. No, the existence of Russia was not at risk. The existence of Russia uh, was already terminated. Um, Russia had become the Soviet Union, and the only vestige of it was the territorial borders that the empire had gained prior. And then when you had a regime change again, and you had the same situation. You had a completely new political entity. Um, reigning hegemonically over the same old inherited uh, territory. That's that's what you got. Um, none of that has any bearing on whether or not a democratic or a functional democratic regime uh, could obtain, or a federation of democratic regimes could obtain. The choice came down to security and territory versus liberty and prosperity. The Kremlin fell back on its own. Also, what about the geography here? He hasn't he hasn't involved the geography at all. He said it's big. But lots of countries are big. Like Canada's big. The United States is big. Brazil's big. Old habits and opted for the former. As such, Yeltsin fortified his executive authority by returning to mass violence as a means of political organization. He shelved the parliament and then ordered the brutal invasion of Chechnya. Yeltsin then left the situation to his hand-picked successor, Putin. What a douchebag. Okay, we got two minutes. Two minutes. Well, uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, we got, we got two minutes and five seconds. Two minutes and four seconds, in fact. Two minutes and four seconds. Why Russia can't become a democracy. He hasn't even talked about geography yet for like half the video. Democracy as a political organization was deemed too risky. So Putin invented his own sovereign democracy. The new political system had all the merits of a democracy, including a bicameral parliament, a supreme court and a host of political parties. In practice, however, Putin's system allowed the ruling United Russia Party to take on the role that the Communist Party had once played during the Soviet era. Sovereign democracy appealed to the public's imperial nostalgia because it espoused domination over others, just as historic Russian philosophies had. Haunted by post-imperial phantom pains, the Russian leadership, but also nationalists, communists, Eurasianists, conservatives, and even some liberals believe that Western-style democracy is impossible for Russia. You guys know that Japan became a democracy, right? Like within mere decades after having a divine emperor. This, this is literally the argument. Russia cannot become a democracy because some Russians don't think it can become a democracy. I know a guy. This is a this is astonishingly stupid, which hurts because I used to I used to appreciate Caspian Report. This is just awful. Are there any sources? This is making like Dugan look sophisticated. Thanks for the five dollars, Smith. Does Caspian not realize that Western democracies still do similar stuff to Russia to this day? I, 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 I thought that was obvious, but we are in we are in new territory, apparently. This shared belief is the result of history. To <laughs> this 
this shared belief is the result. Yeah, no, no shit, Sherlock. Um, people believe things because of stuff that has happened to them. Well done. I hope I hope they give you an honorary degree for that one. To hold the geography from Kaliningrad to Vladivostok necessitates specific responsibilities, as notorious as they are. What? Say it again. Hang, hang on. What the hell? To Vladivostok. The liberals believe that Western-style democracy is impossible for Russia. This shared belief is the result of history. To hold the geography from Kaliningrad to Vladivostok necessitates specific responsibilities. That's stupid. The the territory was. That's that's just stupid. That's just stupid. As notorious as they are. Despotism is therefore arguably part of Russia's geography. But then again, if Russia is... Okay, so there's no argument here except Russia big, therefore despotism. But that's stupid. States of similar scale have been functioning democratically for hundreds of years now. And it's not like there's like a single... It's, it's like a single police force that governs the whole thing. That's... That's broken up as well. There are still local governorships. There's still some level of local autonomy. There has to be. Why isn't U.S. an empire then? I mean, U.S. is kind of an empire. I mean, even the U.K. is an empire. A, a big part of this is that... Um... And I'm not just talking like uh, in, in global terms. I mean, like literally, just on the on the British Isles, there there are there are a, a vast diversity of peoples there that have all been consolidated into one. Japan's an empire. I want to be technical about it, but we have a methodological statist approach to things. So we treat states as if they are in some sense homogenous, and they have some kind of, I guess, um, legitimate ethical basis to to cohere. We, we talk about states as if they're nations. We even refer to them sometimes as nations, despite the fact that, no, they're really not. These aren't, these aren't, um, these aren't groups that cohere because of some shared thing. Ultimately, they are territorial blocks that are controlled by, um, powerful organizations that can exist entirely apart from whatever people happen to occupy the state's territory at any given time. Seal to despotism, let it have democracy, for it gives every person the right to be his own oppressor. I've been your host, Shirvan. Jesus Christ, you're giving up your last 45 seconds? You haven't said anything. Hang on, what's the last sentence again? Is as notorious as they are. Despotism is therefore arguably part of Russia's geography. But then again, if Russia is sealed to despotism, let it have democracy, for it gives every person the right to be his own oppressor. Are you trying to be a fucking poet now? What, did it, what does that mean? Wait, so is, is, is Caspian Report now, like, anti-democratic? What, what was the purpose of that statement? Let it have democracy, for it allows every man to be his own oppressor. But you were just saying it can't become a democracy, so we mean let it have democracy. Are you mocking the idea? What What is the... What the fuck are you smoking? I, I don't know what this even means. This is like... I, I don't know what Deepak Chopper is going on about here, but we have not heard an argument for why Russia cannot become a democracy. We've heard an argument that Russia's really big and a bunch of Russians don't think that we can have a Western-style democracy, whatever he thinks that means. Despite the fact that the modern Russian state is a Western-style state. Very much so is more homogenized than it's ever been in its history politically. Um, 
I think it's trying to characterize the Russian attitude towards democracy. Well, that's not the Russian attitude towards democracy. There are pro-democracy Russians, lots of them. Like, is this just like a is this just like a Putin channel now? What's going on here? Oh, Iko's texting me. Well, I guess that's a thing. Um, hang on, I'll see if Iko wants to chat. Oh my god, okay. Nope. Enough of that. Shh, shh, shh. Stop that. Stop that. That's disturbing. Jesus Christ.